Is your dog ignoring you when you let them off the lead while you're out on a walk or are they refusing to come back when you ask them? Recall problems are a very common issue with new dog owners and experienced dog owners alike. And in this video, I'm gonna help you get over it once and for all. Welcome back to Will and Mabel. If you are new here, my name's Will. I'm a canine behaviorist and on this channel, I make videos like this one to help you become a very calm, consistent, amazing canine leader that is capable of raising perfect canine companions. So if you do wanna join our amazing community here, make sure you click that subscribe button. Now, if you haven't got your dog yet and you're watching this video because you want to preemptively set yourself up for success in terms of recall, congratulations, because that is exactly the approach that you need to take. And in my Perfect Puppy course, that is how I teach people from day one how to get recall mastered perfectly the first time round. But if you are watching this because you've got it wrong already and your dog is ignoring you and isn't coming back to you when you ask it, this is what we're gonna now focus on for the rest of this video. So recall issues for me kind of stem to two things really. First of all, it's an obedience and a leadership issue. Obedience and leadership, one and two. They're the two issues that we need to focus on. The obedience means that the command that you've put on for getting your dog to come back to you isn't ingrained enough either A or B, and this one kind of is the Venn diagram that crosses, a, that uh, kind of bridges across both issues, is that your dog understands what you mean by your whatever your recall command, whether it's come or whatever it is that you use, is that they know what it means, but they're making a decision to ignore you because whatever it is over there is far more exciting and more important to them. And then the other side of the issue that often kind of, like I say, kind of goes hand in hand with both issues is leadership. Your dog might very well have the best obedience in the world and very, very detailed understanding of a recall command, but if he's just going, nah mate, don't wanna to listen to you, that is a common, common issue that you have a lack of leadership and that your dog doesn't respect you as its calm, consistent leader and feels that it can make decisions for itself and doesn't have to listen to your guidance. Now, as I always talk about here on Will and Mabel, people need to understand that dog training and then canine rehabilitation or behavior modification are two very different worlds. But oftentimes the problem is those worlds merge and that's where these arguments and debates come from about what's the best way to deal with either problem behaviors or problem obedience issues. Now like I say the problem is here is that we have an obedience and the leadership issue. Now obedience is usually fits into the world of dog training and I do believe that the world of dog training should be used with pretty much exclusively positive only approach. Now we also have a lack of leadership. Now the problem when we have a lack of leadership is that that fits into the modification and behavior world that often takes more of a balanced approach to fix. And if you're having recall problems, like I say, you often need both. The problem is, if you go to someone that only represents the positive world, you're gonna get a very positive answer to the problem, which unfortunately very rarely works when we're talking about recall. And if you go to the balanced, more behaviorist approach, they often are so sick of being attacked by the positive only people that they then go into this war of slagging each other off and then no progress is made. And that's what we don't like to do here. We like to educate people that there is very two different worlds and both have their merits, neither are wrong, but it's just like a toolbox. You need to have a multitude of tools in your toolbox and choose the right tool for the right job. Now, if you're struggling with recall issues and you take a positive only approach, what you're basically doing is going into a bright approach with your dog where you're asking your dog to come usually for a food reward and what you then need to do is you go into a battle with your dog of making sure that your bribery has a higher value than the thing that they're ignoring you for in the first place so if they're off playing with another dog and you want them to come back to you your bribery has to be a higher value than the implied value of them ignoring you to stay playing with that other dog and that is where very common the positive only approach breaks down because there's only so much high end steak that you can go for before the dog goes, nah, I still don't want that steak. I'd rather play with this dog. And very quickly that breaks down and becomes a null and void response to fixing the recall issue. Whereas on the other hand, in the approach that I like to take is that you want to have a dog that looks to you for guidance, respects your leadership so much that they will happily, gladly do everything that you ask of them because you have such a lovely working leadership and following relationship with your dog. Now that doesn't mean, and this is a lot of the thing that the positive only people will accuse people that want to work in more of this realm, you 
dog isn't coming to you out of fear. It's coming to you out of respect and out of love for your leadership and an eagerness to please and an eagerness to work. That's the relationship that you want with your dog because if you've got that relationship, then you can achieve any level of obedience with your dog with or without rewards. Now, I always use food rewards and positive reinforcement when I'm teaching the dog something new, but once they learn that behavior and I know they know what I mean, I very quickly then remove those treats because I want the dog to do as I say, whether I've got a treat or not, because I refuse to have a relationship with a dog that is simply based on bribery. It's the same way with my children. If I was at a park with my children and I saw them running, chasing a ball towards a road, I need to be able to shout at my son to stop and come back to me now. And I don't want him to look back at me and go, all right, I'll do it for a McDonald's or I'll do it for 20 quid. And if I haven't got those things on me, he goes, all right, nah, I'm all right then, dad, I'll run off. And that is a very in my mind, a very realistic analogy of how we, if we're trying to do an only positive bribery based relationship with our dogs, that's how it works. Now, my son wouldn't do that. And if I asked him to come back to me, he'd come back to me because I'm my son's leader and he respects my authority and my guidance. And it comes from a place of love of me wanting to keep him safe. It doesn't come from a place of fear and he's scared of the repercussions. It becomes from a place of leadership and respect and him doing as I ask of him because I love him and I care about him and I want him to be happy and healthy. That's the relationship that we need with our dogs. So if you're having recall problems, for me, it's a two-stage approach. First thing you need to do is completely restructure that relationship with you have with your dog and restructure it to a point where it's a leader and follower relationship where your dog sees you as a calm, consistent leader that it can look to for guidance in any situation and is happy and eager to follow your commands no matter what's going on or no matter how high value the thing over there that they want is they might I really want to go and play but I've been told not to so I better not that is the relationship that you want with your dog then when you get that response that is the point in which you can positively reinforce it as opposed to bribing your dog to do something the dog does it out of love and respect and then you reinforce that and it's cherry on the top it just solidifies the relationship even higher and makes it an even greater positive loving relationship and that is where we want to come to at with our dogs so to restructure that relationship i absolutely recommend that you put your dog through my boot camp protocol it's my one month protocol protocol. It restructures the relationship. It's the protocol that I use with 95% of my clients. A lot of people want to come to me with issues like this and expect me to give you an instant easy fix and it simply doesn't exist. It, I promise you it doesn't exist. It takes time, it takes commitment and it takes effort because that relationship is something that is earned. It isn't bought and it's not bribed. But once you earn that relationship with your dog, that is how you have a perfect canine companion. So for the vast majority of behavior issues or simple obedience issues like recall, I get my clients to restructure that relationship and simply by restructuring that relationship 99% of the time the problem behaviors fall off anyway and as part of that protocol there's plenty of time for obedience work and food work and reward based work that alongside restructuring the relationship then again fixes your problems like recall. So then once that relationship is restructured or while you're going through the process of restructuring that relationship and you want to focus on recall in the obedience sections of the bootcamp protocol, I would recommend whatever it is that you've been using as your command for the recall, whether that's come or here or whatever it is, that you completely scrap it. You no longer use that rule, that word or that term because for the amount of time that your dog's been failing its recall, every time you've used that, and it's failed, the dog has learned that it doesn't need to follow that. With recall, we want a 100% guaranteed success rate with the command that we use. And to guarantee that success rate, we always use a long line until we know that we have a 100% success rate with that. And the thing that I recommend in terms of tools is a long line and a whistle, dead straightforward. Again, you start with the whistle training indoors in an environment where you can completely control the variables, very narrow corridor, get your dog at the end of the corridor, pip, pip, when they come to you, high reward, praise, food reward, praise, food reward. You then do that into a longer corridor. You then do that between rooms, zero distractions, always on a long line. So if they don't come to you, you can reel them in and guarantee success. We always set our dogs up for success. We never set them up to fail. We guarantee the success and we reward it. When they do it on their own without us having to reel them in, we highly reward it. And we make it very clear that this pip-pip on the whistle means I want you to come to me. And if you do that, very, 
very good things are going to happen. You then do that in your garden, you then slowly increase the distraction level, and again, as long as you've restructured that relationship to the point where the dog wants to work with you and wants to follow your guidance, eventually you'll get to a point where you can do it with distractions going on, and even though they want to go towards that distraction, the pit pit means, oh, hold on, one second, go back, get the reward, and then let them go and play. You don't always only want to use recall to remove them away from a positive experience. If they want to go to that positive experience, use the recall, reward them, and then let them go to the positive experience layer the positivity approach up alongside the restructuring of the relationship and that is how you get a 100% guaranteed success rate with your new whistle recall or your new command if you don't want to use a whistle and that is how eventually over a few months of drilling this you'll have a dog that no matter what's going on will turn on a dime for a whistle that's what lab that's what my labrador sully will do if he hears pip pip doesn't matter whether he's chasing a bird which is his favorite thing in the world going towards some other dogs and playing with them no matter what happens pip pip on that whistle oh it's go time, it's work time, better get back to my dad as quick as possible. And if he comes back quick time, he gets a nice little bit of reward for me and thank you for doing that, I appreciate it. And we just drill that for the, throughout his life. It's never, it's always an ongoing process of working with dogs. So I hope that helped, I hope that makes recall a, a little bit more easy to digest and understand where the problems come from and then if you have got those problems, how to overcome them. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you help, did find it helpful, click that thumbs up button, subscribe if you are new here and you can hit that notification bell so that you can join the community here that we're growing on Will and Mabel where we all help each other become amazing canine leaders. So thank you so much. Again, if you've got any questions, Again, email address is down in the description box below. Happy to help you out via email as well as through videos like this. So I'll see you on the next episode of Will and Mabel.